Hey guys, Chris, welcome back to my channel, and today we'll be doing an art video. Akatsu Cheer is the third season of Friends, taking place after the events of Parade. It takes place in an alternate universe, where Cheer Star have become diamond friends, and a new generation is here to dethrone them. So why Friends? Well, I think that the DCD and brands have a lot of potential, so I decided to explore that by making an entirely new cast and seeing what that would look like. When I asked you guys whether you wanted just the course or the story, most of you seem to want the story, so that's what we're going to do. It'll take the form of episode summaries, and I'll summarize what the arc was about after I finish. After the events of Friends Season 2 and Parade, Star Harmony has become incredibly popular with tons of applicants each year. It's also converted to a boarding school. This is where we meet our new protagonist, Olive. She's a former master baker seeking a new field to conquer. A highlight of the new audition is the presentation round. This allows the girls to showcase any special skills they have for a panel of judges. One girl recreates Ken's makeup looks and Olive submits a video of her baking competitions. Despite her poor performance, the judges are moved by her charisma on camera, so she makes it in at the very bottom of the ranking. As night sets in, Olive meets her new roommate, Kaori. Kaori comes from a big family and values hard work, as she's always had to take care of her younger siblings. She's bothered by Olive's ineptitude and the two butt heads often during lessons. After a week of arguing, the two decide to make a bet. Whoever scores an audition first, has to leave Star Harmony. Olive's pretty cocky, but she can't do many idle activities yet. As a result, Kaori easily scores a commercial that wants to use her song. Olive is devastated, but decides to see Kaori's performance. Kaori performs her new song in the Rosie Flapper chord. After seeing the gap in skill, Olive shamefully leaves school grounds. This episode starts off in the park as Olive sits with her suitcases she couldn't bring herself to go home and has been hiding out in public. As the Diamond Friends car passes by, Wakaba notices her uniform and stops the car. After talking it out, Wakaba takes pity on Olive and asks her to be her one day assistant. Olive is hesitant but decides to go anyway. Throughout the day, Olive watches Wakaba work and slowly starts to appreciate how much it's going to take to be an idol. Wakaba's performance blows her away and Olive decides, maybe she's not done yet. Olive returns to Star Harmony, where Kaori begrudgingly lets her back in. With renewed passion for Aikatsu, she decides it's time to get her first PR. As a fan of Sugar Melody, she's excited to meet its designer, who she's told is on site. When Olive meets Chiharu, she's a little disappointed by her demeanor. She just doesn't see how someone like this could make the courts she loves so much. Chihara is intrigued and asks Olive to work on the PR herself. The two start working, but Olive just gets in the way. She can't so much, and once again, she needs to learn just how much she needs to learn. As a kind gesture, Chihara teaches her some basic stitches, and the two craft the PR together. By the end of it, Olive comes to learn how much love goes into each chord and wears her PR with pride. This episode starts off with our newest character, Nandi. She set up shop outside Star Harmony, where she's selling candy for a bit. During a break, Olive finds Kaori outside, and the three get to know each other. Olive doesn't have an idol school, and mostly travels around in their shop. She's really good with money, but throughout the talk rejects most of their compliments. The episode concludes with her performance, before she leaves their side of town. During a design class, Daki is brought in to teach the girls. After making her own brand, the school decides to have her teach them. kaori has been sewing for her siblings forever, so she's a natural at this class. While Olive's learned a little, Kaori soars to the top of the class. After seeing her proficiency, Daki asks Kaori to help her design a new PR. Kaori feels honored. The two grow closer, and by the end, Daki performs in the PR. I think the first batch of episodes establishes everyone, as well as their skills. 
It also shows the different forms of Aikatsu the girls will be engaging in. Which characters and chords do you like from this part? Along her travels, Nandi lands an audition that'll have her perform at a huge venue. Feeling inadequate, she realizes she's gonna need a brand PR. After calling up the girls, they help her muster the courage to seek it out. Nandi goes to meet the designer of Heartland, who works at a carnival. The designer is nonchalant and happily offers the cards, but Nandi doesn't feel she deserves them. She makes candy to give others happiness and does her best to support her friends, but she doesn't have much space for herself. Recalling her friend's support, Nandi decides that she'll ask for what she wants, giving herself something for the very first time. With her new PR, Nandi's performance goes well. Following their growing friendship, Olive and Kaori start to realize they like each other a lot more than they initially thought. Neither wants to speak, but their feelings are clear. During classes and various idle activities, the managers begin to notice the affinity and spring the idea of forming a unit on them. While reluctant at first, the two agree to form a unit, Novadol. Despite their constant bickering, they're able to put on a good show as they strive to better each other. Once again, Nandi's outside Star Harmony where a few customers seem uneasy. While chatting them up, she hears rumors of singing in the forest. Curious, she gathers the girls to investigate over the weekend. The three camp out near the edge, and once night falls, the moon rises, and a mysterious voice rings out. The beautiful song draws them out, and under the moon, they meet April. April is a shy girl who draws power from the moon. She struggles to keep up in social situations and tends to hide away. A red moon is coming up, and she plans to draw its power into her debut. With her brand new friends, she sets up cameras and lights just in time. The two get to know her, and while she doesn't speak much of herself, she seems nice enough, so they're happy to help her stream her performance to the masses. I felt that this season's goth should still be moon-themed, given how much potential there was in the Red Moon idea. This one's pretty simple. Raki throws a surprise treasure hunt for Wakaba's birthday, and the girls all participate. It's basically just those filler episodes where they get to know each other, so the girls would get to know April and she would get to know them. They would perform in their cheerful chords. Raki invites the girls to her talk show, Lucky Finds. All is already comfortable on camera, but Kaori's pretty nervous. To cheer her up, Olive asks her younger siblings to come. The rest of the episode follows Kaori as she tries to manage her younger siblings on set, but eventually she feels comfortable enough that the interview goes off without a hitch. It would be good focus for her family, as well as showing how Olive knows how to help her now. Following Nova Doll's formation, April's been wanting to ask Nandi about their own unit. Despite that, she's a little worried and turns to Nova Doll for advice. Olive and Kaori feel a bit awkward being asked about their friendship, but April really needs them. She's worried she's a little weird and doesn't want to get rejected. Recalling Pure Palette's proposal, Kaori suggests a Ferris wheel date. This allows the girls a space for them to talk it out, and April feels comfortable enough to ask. To her relief, Nandi agrees and the two form Vestivia. They've already been spending time together and Nandi now has a habit of stopping outside Moonlit Night a little more than she does outside Star Harmony. With both friend groups formed, it's time for a tournament. The Dreamy Friends Cup is open to new friends unit, so both of them sign up. Unsurprisingly, our mains make it to the finals, so it's up to Novadol and Festivia. Despite their best efforts, Festivia loses to Novadol. I felt that they should win early on because I don't really think it's that important for the main friends group to lose. But regardless, following their win at the Dreamy Friends Cup, Olive rides the wave of popularity and opens a one-day cafe with Festivia. The move is rather calculated, showing off her baking skills and presenting good sportsmanship by working with the losers. April works to register as she practices her social skills. Olive and Nandi, however, work in the back. Olive's a little rusty, so she ends up leaving most of the work to Nandi. In all her time as an idol, Olive's been avoiding failing in public. While the one-day cafe goes well, Nandi's left worried about her. 
Cheerstar comes in to break the tension with a camping episode. Raki's been overworking as Maple Ribbon's designer, so Wakaba steps in. She organizes a retreat and the two go off the grid for one week. Here we get into their dynamic and, given that Raki was impulsive during Parade, I would make Wakaba the brains of the operation. Raki gets up late and forgets things, but Wakaba is there to pick up after her. I did want them to have their own episodes separate from the rest of the cast, because I do feel they got a bit shafted in Parade, so I'm trying not to integrate them too much with the rest of the cast. Speaking of Diamond Friends, the final episode this part involves Star Harmony celebrating its 50th anniversary. Alumni are invited and so our OG girls come back. We get to see Pure Palette, Honeycat, and Reflect Moon. The whole event is like an open day and we see two girls leave with a brochure. Our four MCs hang out and enjoy the day as the festivities carry on. To conclude the event, Pure Palette is asked to perform. The two girls behind the jeweling miracle put on a spectacular performance. The audience is stunned and backstage, Wakaba begins to worry. When she talks to Pure Palette, she can't help but compare Cheer Star to them. With this in mind, she wonders if she and Raki are taking this seriously. Now I always wanted Pure Palette to have different colors in their friends' cords, so I decided to make one for them as they would be legacy characters who are going to be involved. After the Star Harmony anniversary, Wakaba asks Pure Palette to stay behind and train with them. She wants to reach their heights and is eager to organize a new tournament. Using their combined privileges, they create a new tournament, the Mega Friends Cup. This combines two friends into a massive four-person group. Hearing news of the tournament, our four girls decide to team up. Coordinating schedules is tough as April's in a different school and Nandi has to wait for them to finish classes. The first few practice sessions are rough and no one is really coordinated. While the rest start to catch up and really get into their groove, Olive begins trying less and less. The weight of facing Diamond Friends weighs on her and she's beginning to break. From missing her appeals to forgetting song lyrics, it's clear she's a mess. Cowdy's rightfully pissed off, but Nandy and April just stand by. After a particularly bad practice session, Olive suggests they disband the group before their inevitable defeat. With one week left to the tournament, Olive still won't cooperate. Fearing the worst, Festivia asks Carrie to step back. Nandy decides to speak to Olive personally. She feels that Olive might be a bit embarrassed admitting her weakness in front of her partner. When the two meet, Nandy and April open up about their feelings, losing the dreamy friends cup. April wanted to disappear, but with Nandy, she was able to push through it. They encourage Olive to speak to Cowdy and that she can't do this alone. Olive musters the courage to see Cowdy and the two finally talk. Cowdy's a little surprised, but understands that Olive doesn't have a long list of failures. She hasn't been doing Akatsu much, so each mistake feels really big. She reminds Olive of how many auditions she's failed and tells her that it's going to be okay. The girls form their mega friends group, Neo Dolls. The Mega Friends Cup is finally here and the stadium is packed. Tickets have been sold out for quite some time and anticipation fills the air. Once the introduction is over, Double Daya steps on stage to perform first. This performance blows everyone away. It's essentially the duet from Rainbow Live. I imagine there's multiple appeals as the full song plays out. Having two diamond friends perform proves to be unbeatable and that's when the contestants start dropping out. First, the next mega friends won't go on, and the next girls are quitting backstage. The episode ends with the presenter unsure of what to do. In our second episode for this tournament, the girls sit backstage as they watch their competition drop out. Some girls are crying while others sit hopelessly. Neo dolls hold hands as they recover from what they just witnessed. Cowdy looks over at Olive, but Olive smiles back. Despite her fears, she decides that they're going next. As her eyes meet Wakaba's on stage, they both smile. The four walk into a hopeless situation and end up losing. Despite that, they're second in the tournament, and I think that this was a huge opportunity of growth for Olive, which is why I felt she should 
face her fears even if she was going to lose inevitably. Following the Mega Friends Cup, Star Harmony is more popular than ever. With an influx of applicants, they hold an audition for 10 student slots. These girls will be spread across the classes. At the gates, two best friends find each other and vow to stand on stage together. Nova Doll are asked to help the girls in their presentation round. Their new fame precedes them. The new applicants fangirl over them and Cody reminisces about their own auditions. Two girls stand out from the rest though. Aiko and Gabriella. The two help each other out and pass the presentation round. Aiko shows off her photography and helps Carrie with her makeup, while Gabriella dances for a presentation round. The two perform to much applause and pass the audition. I really wanted two more girls to round out the cast, and I love Rin and Maruka, so I wanted to add my characters in a similar way. Aiko and Gabriella are looking for ways to earn fame quickly. Feeling bold, Gabriella challenges Kaori. To prepare for this, she sets out to acquire a Heavenly Flame PR. Hibiki returns to take her on this quest. They journey to a strange temple where Gabriella's passion earns her a new PR. Her fiery dance gives the designer the impression she can bring the Flame and Grace Chord to its full glory. Now, when she returns to school to challenge Kaori, she performs in her new PR, and despite her loss, the challenge draws her some eyes. To help new students integrate into Star Harmony, the girls are assigned mentors. Olive is assigned to Aiko and the two begin spending time together. Aiko apologizes for Gabriella's challenge, but Olive doesn't mind. She encourages Aiko to try things too. Aiko's skills lie in photography and makeup. She helps her classmates prepare for auditions, but shies away from any photos herself. Olive sees a little bit of April in her, but decides to stay back and offer support. As Christmas approaches, Star Harmony organizes the Winter Cup to celebrate the season. Gabrielle is excited, but Aiko seems reluctant to enter. Gabrielle is confused, but Aiko claims she just doesn't have much to offer. Gabrielle is vibrant, pretty, and a great dancer. Aiko's skills are only good for others. Gabriella reminds her that it was their dream to perform together. They've come so far and she wouldn't want to be here with anyone else. Aiko takes it to heart and decides to seek out a PR from Antique Sailor's designer. Here we meet baby pirates again. They go on a seafaring adventure and eventually she acquires the Swell Sailor Chord. These new girls would breathe new life into old brands while also allowing us to meet old characters. Finally, the Christmas Cup is here. Olive's looking forward to it and she had is excited too. As Christmas cheer fills the air, the two exchange presents. Olive hands Chiharu a small cupcake, while Chiharu hands her a small box. Inside, Olive finds the pink opera cord. Chiharu wishes her luck and the tournament begins. Aiko is determined to win, as is Gabriella. Despite her doubts, Aiko manages to make it to the final, where she meets her mentor once again. Olive is proud she didn't interfere, as she can see that Aiko found her confidence without her. Despite coming in second, Aiko takes her position with pride. Olive may have won, but Aiko finally gave it her all. The final episode of this arc is all about Wakaba. She invites Love Me Tear for something special. Wakaba thanks Mirai for her first PR and announces her new project. Mirai helped make the first one, Raki assisted with the second, and now Wakaba will make her third. With all their encouragement, Wakaba pushes herself to design the Deep Forest Chord. I'll be honest, this PR is mostly there because I felt like the first one wasn't Tyrolean enough, so I tried to make it more in line with her brand's fashion sense. If you've made it this far, I want to thank you so much for watching, because a Diamond Friends Cup is something that I'd like to leave open. We've got four units. Nova Doll, made up of Olive and Cowdy, Festivia, made up of Nandy and April, Mermaiden, made up of Aiko and Gabriella, and finally Cheer Star, made up of Wakaba and Daki. Let me know which group you'd like to win the Diamond Friends Cup. I left it open-ended since it is a fan project and I don't feel like the ramifications will be felt in this story, so there's no real point in having it revealed here.
Let me know what chords you liked, if you enjoyed the format of this art project. Initially it was just going to be the images and me explaining the inspirations, but I did actually work on a story so I felt I should try something new. With that said, thank you guys so much. Be sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.